and our English letter, there is a huge difference. So our identity cannot be merged with the, any faith because a Chinese Christian, a Turkish Christian, an Armenian Christian are son, the sons of God who doesn't acknowledge any national identity. And I usually say that thing on my show, and we have discussed about this thing for so many times. So in my opinion, if you go to church on Sunday or you get baptized, not necessarily that you become an Armenian. Being an Armenian is a choice. You choose to be an Armenian just as you choose to be a doctor, a lawyer, a waiter, a taxi driver. Those are choices that we do. So I think we should throw away the Christian identity from this so-called hypocrisy word of Christian Armenians or Armenian Christians. I, it, it's interesting because uh, I don't know if I, if I would totally disagree with that. I, one is a faith and one is a nationality, but that nationality developed within a, not, uh, within a, within a system. I mean, uh, the whole idea that we have an alphabet is because of Christian identity. But we had the alphabets before even Christian. You know, but it wasn't codified, it wasn't put into the structure, and then the, even the fifth century that came out, the literature that came out. And I think what we do is a lot of times we think of ourselves today, uh, we look at our history in terms of who we are today. So we look at fifth century and we say, wow, look at all this stuff. And what they did is they, they took these myths and they put themselves in it like a uh, I, I'm a big objector to that, you know, that we automatically became a part of the myth. But look at it in the shoes of these people at that time, trying to find an identity for themselves. But they were struggling with the same thing. And what's interesting, in back in uh, 2009, what is that, four years ago, I was at a conference in, in Edgemeyer's where these same issues, which we've been struggling with here in the diaspora, were coming out over there. Because over here, you have this unique situation. The man says, I'm Armenian, but I go to, um, I, I don't believe in Christianity. I don't, uh, or I, I confess the, the Buddhist tradition, but I feel myself Armenian. And Velapan made an interesting statement. He said the same thing, believe it or not. It, it's that he said that, who is the Armenian? What is Haigavani? Uh, he said, the man who confesses. Purity. If you say that I'm an Armenian, you then have you, to take that. You, you, you could be a Muslim, Muslim Armenian, you could be Buddhist he Armenian. He says, well, 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 yeah, because, yeah. look, to me, Christianity is a way of thinking. It's a, it's a belief system. Christianity is based on something that will give you the energy to do the things. Like for instance, you look at Armenia right now. You know, do you know that right now in the whole world, there's more people on the LA freeways than there are Armenians in the whole world? Think about that one. What are, eight million? Every morning there's 10 million people on these freeways. Okay? Well, we were supposed to be 160 million. Like, but we alienated everybody. Yeah, but you, you can't do the way we're kids. supposed to be. We, 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 were, we, we were supposed to be a lot of things. But the thing is that this is who we are right now. So how can you leverage that smallness? And you, those of you in physics know that it's a real simple thing. It's a fulcrum, right? How do you have, you have some big mass over there and you need to leverage that. Well, how do you leverage it? Well, the blacks did it and guess what? They used Christianity. The Indians did it, the uh, Gandhi, who was not a Christian, he took the basic principles of nonviolent resistance. So as Christians, there's a set of tools that we can use to become better but, people. And but, that's, but that, I think, is what we're not talking about. On the base of Christianity or any faith, there have been more wars and more killings because of religion. Yeah, but there's, been more, Indian, there's, excuse me, when, but there's been more hospitals and more education. I mean, that's like saying, when I, when I have a need of hospital. It's a non-profit non -profit organization that can hire yeah, you. When you. When you need a hospital, you go to St. Joseph's, you go to Adventist. Yeah, because that's it's a, a religion. Now, Glendale Adventist is part of the uh, Catholic charity who controls 12 hospitals who make billions of dollars. But coming back But when to you go to school, you go to Loyola Marymount. That's a, that's again, a, that's that's a money, making, money making ventures. But now, that's not something, right? Come, come, coming back to the fifth century, uh, and we call it the golden age of the Armenian literature, which is basically translation of Hebrew and Greek books to Armenian. So we are so pathetic in our way of thinking. Where in the 7th, 12, 13, even in the 20th century, we had so many Armenian writers who wrote so many books and so many novels and so many poetry, original works, that we don't consider that to be um, authentic or call it like the golden age. 
but we call the golden age something that we copied. Now, coming back to the identity of an Armenian, unfortunately, so many people tell me, how come I am not Christian? That means I'm not Armenian. Uh, I was baptized when I was almost 40 days old. Um, it wasn't my choice. I became an Armenian by choice just in the last 15, 20 years. And when I say I'm not Christian, or I'm not, and then automatically people assume that if I'm not Christian, then I'm a Muslim, or Hindu, or Buddhist, or whatever other uh, religion or faith they are. I say no, I don't believe in anything except my Armenian identity. And I'm content with it. I don't need to go to church on Sunday to talk Oh, no, I can't talk. I have to listen on Sundays when I go to church. And that's why you go. In my church, usually people say, hey, shut up. That's why I like you. <laughs> but in Armenian church, nothing has changed for the last 1,700 years. And today, my eye god, I call it eye god. The iPhone is my eye god. Does better things to me than if I go to church. When will the Armenian church understand that its way of doing teaching has faded out. And that's why we're losing, the Armenian Apostolic Church is losing individuals going attending just because it's a one-way highway. And I think me being not Christian and an Armenian, and since you guys call yourselves Armenian Christians, I need to help you. I need to help you to find out a way to bring more Armenians, if that is your way of uh, Armenian identity, bringing the Armenian identity, or the youth. How many of you guys go to a church? But let me tell you something. Take the whole population of Armenians in the world and take every Armenian church. I, in my research, when I went and traveled throughout the US, I stood in front of 133 churches, being Catholic, Protestant, Usabur Chagan, Araki, like I'm not Usabur Chagan because there is a big issue over there too. Yesterday we were having a fight on Facebook. And 133 churches, if 100 people are there in the US, each one, out of almost one and a half million Armenians living in the US. 13,000 people go to a church on a given Sunday. If there is a good hockey on Kist, how many people attend your church? We're full, so we can't count. Without hockey on Kist? Yeah, we don't have Oh, we don't have a few. No, yeah, that's still, why. That's why I tell you guys, I like Father Vaskin more than any other. We have other okay, please, but it's like. But yeah. on an average, you guys remember when last time I was here, I spoke about Saint Martin, the Mother Cathedral in New York. Their door cost three hundred thousand dollars. When I opened that door on a Sunday in New York, there were fifteen people worshiping God. But the, the, the Saint Martin, to their defense, yeah. is in the middle of Manhattan. No one lives there. It's, it's Why do you have the church there? It's in a business district for PR. You know that. You said it a few minutes ago. There's a, there's a. Well, it's a business. It's a good charity. But look, all the New York wealthy Armenians can give to that nonprofit in Barta, where three hundred thousand dollars is given to a door. Okay. No, and you know what? I'm going to talk about what we do. Okay. Instead okay. of talking about way yeah, out there, right. and everything like oh, that. Okay. So, okay. Like, so, uh, do you know that? Do you know that once a month? A group of Armenians through our church, based on their Christian faith, go out and they uh, pass out food right in Skid Row. And the question always is, are they Armenian? No, they're not. Um, this happened 15 years ago. Right now we have a blood drive on April 24th. I started that 15 years ago. But I'm just starting. None of the other priests are doing No, no, wait a minute. What I want to tell you about it is that at that time people came up to me and they said, well, who's going to get the blood? Well, we're going to give it to the blood drive. But who's going to, are they going to be Armenians who get it? I guess if somebody has an accident, I hope it goes to them. What about Turks? Do they get blood? Yeah. Well, think about it for a minute. Imagine a Turk living with Armenian blood. Is that the greatest payback in the world? <laughs> think about it for a minute, okay? Anyway, now people are doing it. Now, what, what is this all based on? It's based on some basic ideas, like I was saying, of leveraging love. If you can put love in your, that's all Christ taught. You can go to all the churches you want. You can go there every morning. I don't think anybody and any priest, including Val or whoever, will say that by going to church, you qualify as a Christian. Church is an opportunity for me 
I don't know if it's for you. I've got 168 hours during that week. For that one hour, I want to just disengage. I want to turn off my cell phone. I want to be at peace for that hour. And you know, the East calls it meditation. We call it prayer. We call it worship. It's just to calm down and say that this is important. And this is why it doesn't work here in America. Because it's our Armenian church is very holistic. If you go to the Armenian church, it's not just about some guy standing up and saying, you know, you're going to go to hell and all that. And all that. It's, it's holistic. You use all your senses. You use your nose, the, the hum comes up. You uh, use your eyes, you see the beauty around you. you. Use your ears to listen to the sounds. You even taste, you hug people, it's your, your thing. And now, I wanna go back to your statement about how we translated all of this stuff. That's, that's the way you look at it. How about if you spin it that these people took from us? And that, I firmly believe this. For instance, we talk about love, and we always go to that Greek idea that love is Philios, brotherly love, um, eros, erotic, and agape. Armenians don't have that. We have one sin. We have one sin. Yeah. And I think when Nersa it could be in bed or it could be in church. Exactly. <laughs> and when Nersa Shnorali said that, Nersa Shnorali, 12th century, one of the saints of the Armenian church, he says, Seramun Jesus Christos, Sidim Karim Sid Jumya, to 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 get rid of that. What are you talking about there? And, and I didn't experience this till a few years ago. I was listening to a piece by Beethoven. And you know, I had never gotten into it, but I started crying. It was erotic. It was filial. I understood it. And it was completely consuming. And we as Armenians have this. We have that one set. I think that we've been given this number somehow. People say that, oh, we followed the Greeks or the Jews. I don't think so. I, I, think, um, I think that that's a misrepresentation of who we are. I think we're greater than that. So that, that's how I see the fifth well, century. I don't see anything wrong by anybody choosing to be a Christian or Muslim or Buddhist and say he or she is an Armenian. Because faith is a choice, not birth given right. In the 21st century, being an Armenian has become into a choice. Now, we choose to be Armenian, but we don't speak Armenian. That has translated I read something from Taranko, we are Armenians. Now, you remember last time I was here? That day you guys announced that you guys were having a hookah night. And that was your activism as a student at Glendale Community College. And I bashed you guys on the spot. You remember that? Now, in my opinion, there are better ways of raising money, and I gave you an example at that time. Now, the Armenian church has youth programs. It's the same thing. Armenian youth go to the youth program, ACYO, and they feel that they are Armenian. But what are they, what are they taught there? Nothing about the Armenian identity, everything about the Christian faith. Yerusalem, Baganev, and whatever follows in the Actually, Bible. Actually, uh, I'm, I'm gonna disagree only because I saw a flyer for this year's ACYO pilgrimage and it's only Armenian and I said my preaching has changed things well maybe it has maybe there's people listening to you but I'm, I'm completely offended because you've got some you've got the essence I mean how come have you ever thought about it black America they use the teachings of Jesus Christ and they found civil rights they found civil rights through the teachings of Jesus Christ have you ever thought about that and we have it but we're sitting around and saying oh, if you look at the most of the world, you have um, Pope Francis was saying, who are these people, idiots? There was like a ton of people that were coming out there, and they were all talking about something about peace in the world. I mean, but me as a human being, if I utilize my brain and not my emotions, I can bring peace to society. No, I don't, not by I brains. Don't. I don't I, believe by brains. No, if you, you have know. to have some fear. No. So as a student, well, we're talking to students right now, okay, their activism, in my opinion, if 50% of the attendees here go to Armenian church because it's an Armenian church, that doesn't make them an Armenian. It doesn't make them active within the Armenian identity. Because you can go to any other church where the priest is standing at the door when the service is over and will say, my daughter, my son, is there anything I can help you? Besides Father Boskin, I don't think any other priest does anything in the Armenian community. 
excuse me, I'm not following the premise. So you're saying that there's people out there who say by coming to church, you're an Armenian. Exactly. Okay. I, because, I, 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 because whenever I say I'm not Christian, the first thing they hit me with is then you're not an Armenian. Or how come Ishte Sagi is? Ishte Sagi is a different kind. I know, but Ishte Sagi means that you're not an Armenian. See, unfortunately, just like what Rafi Ovanissan did in, in, America, in Armenia, he took over my dead body, you can't be elected or sworn in, but then he translated that in the U.S. when you use over my dead body means something else. So, it was Ishte, yeah, Ishte uh, gets translated that you're not an Armenian. Yeah, you're but uh, you, know, you know that, I mean, like, we do that constantly. Do you know I have a, a, a family that moved here from France? This is a true story, it's so sad, it's true. Um, they came, and our church is right across from Cooper High. The father came to me in tears because the daughter was, they came to Glendale because they thought they would see Armenians in a high town, Mitch, but you know, no. it's not They went to Hoover High, the daughter for two months was going there and did not have one Armenian friend because she was not Beirutsi, she wasn't Barskai, she wasn't among the highest ones. And so she was kind of shunned, and she was yeah. in tears. Yeah, because so we, we do that, we do that. We are, are the most racist people on the planet. Well, we do that, naturally. Now, you guys remember my joke of two Armenian families from Glendale on a cruise ship traveling. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, one family here is an Armenian word happening there. Katar Naganai, are you Armenian? Yes, I am Armenian. Are you Armenian? Yes, I am Armenian. Where are you from? Glendale. We are from Glendale too. Where? On Adams. Where on Adams? Broadway and Adams. Where? 540 Broadway on Glendale. Well, I live on the same building. What floor? Third floor. We live on the first one. We haven't seen, how long? 15 years. We haven't seen each other. They saw each other on the cruise ship. This could be a joke, but it is reality. But well, that's part of American life. I mean, that, that's, that's not just for Armenians, anybody. But we call that ourselves is. the smartest because we were the first Christian nation on this planet. And Christianity teaches to be friendly to, to your neighbor, to be there for your neighbor. Uh, Actually, to our, that. It says to forgive your neighbor. Forgive your neighbor. So we should forgive um, the Turks, and we should forgive every other nation, nation who has destroyed Armenia in its current three, 4,000 years, the Arabs, <coughs> the Byzantines, the uh, Mongols, everybody. And let's not have April 24th because of the Armenian church. I mean, it's hypocrisy on April 24th when I see all the priests up front walking, and then kids behind them, buy car, buy car, Minchel Berch, they want to buy cars. And then, <laughs> and then, Turkim Baban, Turkim Baban, and then the priest will go to the uh, monument. It's hypocrisy. Why are we doing this? Because Christianity teaches you to forgive your neighbor. Whatever happened to you, you're going to fear, because God will punish them. But from our God was. Well, did you see his latest video on YouTube? He couldn't recite Deir on April 24 in, uh, in uh, Armenia. Well, that happens. I mean, people have lapses, right? But he is the Gato I know. If he has lapses, then he has lapses. No, yeah, we, no, we start but, looking at other people. But here, here is the issue. We take ourselves out of the equation. But here is the issue. Look, here is the issue. Why are we hypocrites? The Christian faith, by itself, tells you to forgive and forget. I'm not the person who's going to forgive and forget what happened to my ancestors. Christian, that you, you're misquoting Christ throughout today. He never says forgive and forget. Well, he, for, for, he says forgive. He says, Father, forgive them, right? Okay. They don't know what they're doing. Does he say, I forgot about it? No, 2,000 years later, we're going to Then why are, we, why are we on April 24 when all the clergy are in front? And you guys are. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. out there. I'm giving blood. I'm giving helping exactly. the homeless. What, doing but stuff see, here's stuff. This, this question is you and I are different. We are because, I'm different. Taking, because I'm taking the words that that Christianity gives us. You're a true Christian. That's no, no, no. I'm, I don't want to be true Christian. I, I, to me, I'm, I'm not even worthy of that. But okay. what, I'm, what I'm looking at is that we keep saying that the Armenian church is this. The Alphard did this. Yeah, that's fine. You know, there are people. They're human beings. But how am I affected by that? Am I in that equation? And I need to put myself okay. in that. What so, am I doing about it? Well, here is the if issue. I'm sitting around over here, I'm just as guilty. I know. But we are insisting on the Christian identity within the Armenian identity. What is bigger? In my opinion, being an Armenian is more important than being Christian. In your opinion, being a Christian will be more important than being an Armenian because... They're two different things. They're apples and oranges. That's like saying that why are five we apples and four oranges. But why are we calling our church the Armenian 
apostolic church or the Armenian Christian because church? Because it is the Christian church of the, the traditional, it started off in Armenia, right? What, what, came what, to Armenia. But Jesus said only through him we're going to go to see his father. Right, and there's a so, story. So why don't we just call every Armenian church just a church, a Christian church? And let everybody remember when I produced my Dudu to the Badarak of Gomidans? Yes. The issue was because we are so hypocrites, we copy other people. We copied the European way of the Bada, the, the religious hymns, into our church instead of utilizing an Armenian identity within the church. So now, because the Armenian church is the oldest of churches existent, in, in existence, I think if we remove the name Armenian from it and we call it the Christian church, I think Chinese people, Asia, um, remaining Asians, African Americans in the US or in the world, the Dutch, the French, everybody will go to a church just to see their uh, way to, to God. But now, we bring the identity Armenian because when I travel throughout the US, every church in the East Coast where Armenians have evaporated, but the church was there. So the meaning of the church, keeping your Armenian identity, was the biggest mistake because Armenians, Armenians kept a building that is a worship place by just adding the name Armenian on it, it existed. So here is another hypocrisy within our communities that we do. Tomorrow, your church in Glendale, the, we have what, six churches in Glendale? I think there's one. Okay, we have over six churches in Glendale serving the Armenian community. Wow. In just 75 years, there'll be no Armenian in Glendale. There'll be offsprings of Armenians and kids are going to say our ancestors were Armenians. Because someone, you're hitting something that is fundamental to any organization. No. What is, what is your mission? The mission of the church is not keeping Armenians alive. Okay. That is not the mission. Now, the now here's, here comes the solution. If the church said because we are Armenian church, it is our obligation to keep Armenians as Armenians, then we existed. Now, when I asked it other priests, it. no, you can't do it. When I asked other priests in East Coast, they said, all those factories who provided work to all those immigrants in the early 1900s and their offsprings, when they shut down, Armenians went to another location. So if the church was not a one-way highway and it was two-way highway to establish businesses, to make sure that their parishioners have jobs, they would have stayed there. Now, if you don't have a job in Glendale, you're going to move out of Glendale. Am I right? You say no, but you you will do it. We are going to say something, do something else. <laughs> if you have a job right now in Arizona and you can't get a job in Glendale or Los Angeles, the major you're going to move to Arizona. And you will. No, you know what? Uh, let me tell you something. You're, you're forgetting about the human spirit. You're forgetting about... Which is much greater than the spiritual spirit. And, and, and here's the problem, is that you're, you're discounting this. This was the problem with communism, too. They discounted that the human spirit still wants its own self, its preservation of the ego. So four years ago, I get a call from uh, the principal at Glendale High. She's a wreck. And this is, we documented this. I don't know if some of you might even remember that. But she said that she had Armenian students who had been accepted to first grade colleges, but they weren't going. They were refusing even scholarships because their parents had convinced them to stay here, do the family business, we'll buy you a car, we'll buy you a thing. So what did we do? We went out to USC, we got a few um, students from the ASA there. We came and we gave a one day presentation to the parents like, you know, I mean, what are you guys scared about going? Yeah, well, that's the first stuff. generations who came here to Right, Korea. but what I'm saying the is second that, generation is gonna go to Minnesota to get his, his no, but, wait, but the thing is that that human thing, that design, what we need to do is start talking about the, the, the the heart, so that people understand, like for this, this generation, you guys have it within your capability to move this world right now. Definitely. And we're not doing that. We're Why? not talking about that. Why aren't we doing it? Because the church not is preaching. Because of the, church. No, the, church. the church is How preaching many of you, Let me ask that. How many of you have been told by the church, don't, don't reach your potential? No, 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 that's not my question. No, no. <laughs> my point is this, because the church, the Christian faith is saying, when you die, you're gonna to go to Heavenly Father, who is gonna be personally taking care of you over there. <laughs> Armenians live, remember my joke about how Jews created Christianity and say, 
the heaven is yours, let planet Earth for us. And then who are the stupidest people on this planet who knew that there's something they're gonna get for free in a, in a place that it doesn't exist? Armenians. Armenians. Armenians went after Christianity because once they die, they're guaranteed a large banquet hall or a large space in heaven where God, Jesus, Mariam, Joseph, and everybody's gonna be there. And they're gonna have fun. This is the hypocrisy. You're confusing Armenians with Mormons. Well, see, that's the problem. Because it's hypocrisy. You can't be an Armenian, you can't be a Christian. Because the Christian faith tells you that. I've never heard, I never heard that. Uh, this is news to me, you know, that you're getting banquet halls. In fact, that's my, my way of getting that. But, you know, no, but how could you hear Jesus' quote is, he who wants to follow me, pick up your cross. That's where, a life where, of suffering. Where, where, that's where, not a life of Whoever wants to go to, he to heaven, not hell, because whoever's going to hell is going to come with me. Whoever wants to go to heaven and see my father, they have to come to me. That's a dictatorship. He was like um, telling yeah, but, them, you know, they have to come to me. Yeah, it shows that but why are we here? Because you're buying into what the Jews have taught you. The Armenian, the Armenians, the Armenian church. Yeah. It is part of the Jewish faith. That's a shnorah that gives you the primer. It says the name of love is Jesus. Now, let me ask you this. You understand that Jesus is the incarnation of love. It's a little bit more spiritual. But how do you get from that point and say, the only way to the Father, the only way to heaven is through love? Now, I buy that. I buy that. You have to have love. And you have to do it through love. Okay, but I think we're getting on to... Yeah, well, I think, well, I think we don't have that much time, but yeah. the main topic today, I think, is student activism. Uh, let's get you guys involved. I mean, one of the issues with Armenians is they don't like to express. Just like when you go to church, you sit down for two hours, the priest on the Quran, blah, 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 or Nate Sifan, you stand up, you sit down, you stand up, you sit down. <laughs> but is that your guys' reaction? Is that really what happened? I didn't see that. I, I that's how that. I see it. Yeah. Either that's you guys step. actually sit for two hours. You guys okay. go at 10 o'clock. Now. You yes. sit through that? <laughs> now, here. Or do you show up at 10 to 12 and say, oh, these guys have been doing it for two hours. Okay, Father Baskin, now I'm going to throw it to the students. I don't want you to feel that you're at church that you can't say anything. You guys want to say, Something against me, say against me. When I say something um, productive, say something. The minimum is to express, which Armenians don't like to do. Now, after this meeting, you might go out and start with, <laughs> but when we are around, we don't express. And the issue with Armenian identity today is because of all those Amutis. There is nothing Amuti right now. So please, you have a question? Um. Yeah, the question is, first of all, I'd like you to define Armenian identity according to you. What do you mean by saying Armenian? How? What's, What's the Armenian identity? Yeah, what do you mean by that? And second, Armenian identity is called. And second, I have a just, just a request. Yeah. Uh, you're very illiterate in Christianity. Yes, I am. I no, know. honestly, <laughs> I'm not trying to. Uh, There's nothing wrong about that. I know nothing but, about but Islam. But you keep, you know, you keep misquoting and misrepresenting Christianity and then stoning it. Oh, that's wrong. What, what was you, the wrong quote that I gave? You I never gave you know, any quote, I just gave no, no, my... I'm, I'm not here to debate you, but you, I, I'm going to give you just one point. example. Um, you said, but no, no, what forgive you said, and forget, which is absolutely nonsense. There is no such thing in Christianity. Oh, okay. And I'll make a sound for a nice one kill church teaches that, the church teaches that. <laughs> With the priest and front. You guys do that. You, you, you keep doing this and a lot of people. But you guys are walking up front with the demonstration. No, now, let's go back to the people that's not? funny, you know. Okay. But that's now, not true. Okay. Now, you had one question and the second was an opinion, which yeah. it's you are entitled to your opinion, which I disagree. But coming back to the first uh, question, what is Armenian identity? In my opinion, Armenian identity is culture. The difference between a Chinese individual and an Armenian individual is the culture, nothing else. And what is culture? Language, language, language. From language comes a subsidiary of music, whatever, 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 whatever. But the identity cannot be anything except culture. Today, we are presented as Armenian culture is the church. That, I, I, 
I've never seen it. I really haven't. You, I, has anybody heard that the Armenian church is Armenian culture? I documented over 568 locations in the U.S. And they, and they actually said Major, this is majority, majority were churches. Were churches. How come in the history of the Armenian existence for thousands and thousands of years, we haven't done anything except when Kirko Lusavurich or Khavarich came and made our nation. <laughs> Just forget about everything before, and we only are building churches. How come, how come we don't have cultural locations, and how come today we are speaking English? How come today in the Armenian church, even in the East Coast, the sermons are dying in English? You're losing your identity because church does not represent right. So for me, culture and culture starts from language. Okay, who kept your language? Who kept my language? Yeah. Yeah. Not the church. Not the church. Then what cultural? Church funds all schools. And they provide that's, that's part of the business. So the church didn't you know, you're, again, Okay, you're show, me, show, me, show me. Okay, Bahan Tekeyan. I do Sivag. Sivag Abuti. I'm talking about the current ones. Show me all those writers whose books were printed by funds from the church. The church prints books about Jerusalem and what the Jews are forcing on us to become Christians. Show me the Armenian church who massively has produced Armenian literary works that today we can read. Let's come back. Let's come back. I think I'm out there. 
And same Khalimian Hayri, same Khalimian Hayri. He went to Berlin. He didn't speak any European language. Why did he go to Berlin? After he went to Berlin, the 16 Armenian uh, article became 16. Ber why, why are you so. Well, we don't want to acknowledge that, but why? The, uh, do you think there was no one in Armenia that could speak any European language? No, there is so many people, people like Kacham Prabodian who could go and uh, represent Armenia in Europe. You because. Only, you just now said, Mishra, only talking Armenia. No, no, you just now said. That no, good for no, no, because no. Kacham Hayri didn't speak any European language. He just went there and stared at everyone. That's the whole thing. I have, a, I have another issue, guys. If you go to any Armenian church right now, you definitely will see the Bible or the Sharagan or Badarak book in English next to the Armenian. I think an assimilation is being helped with the church for you to lose your Armenian identity and start doing, do you perform the Badarak with the English language? Oh, no, not the Badarak, but the Karoza, okay, no, yes. You're you're both both yeah, it does both. So the church is part of the organized crime entity who's trying to take away the Armenian culture from Armenians. You're contradicting to yourself. I'm not contradicting, I'm just telling, you said that the church has kept the Armenian language. You know? But You're the safe. church itself is yeah, taking uh, away from the Armenian language. You know what, I, we got a little bit of time. I'm going to make a statement too. It's about activism, and this is, I believe it, okay? Right now, this is the most powerful generation that we have. And you have, you're seeing it in the Arab Spring. You're seeing it throughout the world, okay? I mean this wholeheartedly, because next week, everyone's going to get up and saying, kill a Turk for Jesus and all that kind of stuff. Don't buy into that stuff. You have that power right now to make the kind of changes. Take what Stefan is saying, take what I'm saying, and and mold it. And, and this is such a beautiful time to be alive. Can you believe that right now I'm doing a podcast, it's my fifth year. I didn't have to ask anyone's permission. I just buy a little bit of stuff and I do it. You have that ability to get your feelings out. This is so healthy right now that there's a conversation going on. Okay, Stefan's entitled to his beliefs, whatever they are, He's entitled to it, as I am, as you are, as everybody else is. But don't just throw it out because you've heard it, because it's comfortable to say it. There's a lot of comfort in, in bashing people, especially big organizations. When I look at the Armenian church, I don't call it a 2,000-year-old organization. It's a 90-year-old organization. That's it. When the Turks wanted to destroy the Armenian people, they went for the jugular vein. And it's this 90-year-old thing that has gone through communism and is now trying to stand up. Now, I can either become part of the solution or I could just sit there and bash it. And I could say, that's a lousy little thing. Yeah, it has problems. It's made up of people. It's made up of people. I choose to live my life through that, through a doctrine that was given to us about nonviolent resistance, about a, a way to change the world. Because the reality of it is that there's only less than 10 million of us in the whole planet. It's a very, very small amount. I think if we use the, if we use the, the philosophy that has been given to us, we can leverage it, much like the other oppressed nations did. But we're not willing to go all the way. So I want to impress upon you that we have to get involved, and you are that generation to do it. With a small little laptop, a tablet, you can tap into more minds than anyone then we got Khalimian Hayrix and everybody else that came before. That's a lot of power. You should take it. Yes. I have said this on my show, I'm gonna say it again right now. You guys are just a, a match that I can pull from a matchbox and to lit that match, all I have to do is struck it like this and hold it in my hand and there'll be fire. As long as that fire comes and touches my hand, it gets burned. I will feel it and I'll drop it. But that's what all of us are right now in the Armenian community. But when that match is lit, another piece of paper comes touched. The energy will pass to that piece of paper. I'm just giving symbolism right now. But my point is, we are wasting our energy doing stupid things, April 24th, or other things in our identity. We are not taking the essence of the energy and transforming it into a much higher energy so that the outcome will become better. This year I chose, it's been all, I have been one of the organizers of the April 24th comm commemoration back from 1982. I was sitting in these classes and everybody talk, I, thought I was a Tashnak Sagan, but I'm a wrong girl. But it's been almost 15 years. I think that what we need to do is to educate others 
not about the genocide. Who cares about the genocide? We need to educate others, meaning non-Armenians, about this nation's gene pool, the ability of what we can do. This year, I launched my website called Let Us Educate. I'm sending out all my three books to elected officials. And you guys know my joke on my show. No, it's my money. But because Armenians believe to give money to build a church and will not give money to Stefan to send those books, I make the joke of saying, Baton Rouge, the Armenian community in Baton Rouge was so nice to me, I sent them 20. Yes, we have, yes, we have two, and they are me in America. To be given to the mayor, 12 district council members, the fire chief, the police chief, the sheriff, and five judges. The Scottsdale, Arizona, same thing. Fresno, California, the same thing. And I'm doing it. We need to educate our just citizens of the United States that we as Armenians, we've been here since 1618. We are not fresh out of the boat. 1618, America did not exist. We were here. And we gave to every individual on this planet through our individualism, not Armenianism, individualism. So many innovative ideas that made every individual, including if I consider the Turks to be enemies, not as human beings, but the idea, somebody considers the, another race to be our enemies, and such. But we, as individuals, have given up. Why? Because we have brains. Today, our brain is not working. What I'm doing is I'm just dropping a piece of oil for the Jean Kodats, rusted coolers of Armenians, <laughs> to start working. Now, the issue of Christianity, non-Christian, like I always say, Lenin Babic and Jesus Babic are the same people. <laughs> and the fight starts because somebody wants to defend Lenin, another wants to defend Christos, but nobody will understand what my point is. Because the U.S. are Jean Kodats from all those <laughs> stupid ideas that have been bombarded to us. Each one of you has the ability of thinking on your own. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to Father Baskin. Don't listen to anybody. Just listen to your brain. I mean, can you listen to your brain? No, I want everybody to. <laughs> so that way, when we start using our brains and not our hearts, we can become leaders who will provide to humanity better things. Because my documentation of the Armenian world is to tell every stupid Armenian that Armenia by itself is not enough for us. The whole planet is Armenia. So would you put that down, that that's basically where, where we differ today? And it really comes down to you're saying, go with the brain, and I'm saying add an element of heart in it. That's right. Is that it? Or we can come halfway and use half of your, your heart and half of my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I think we have another one. You have a question? Yeah, I have a question. In terms of activism, uh, what do you think the diaspora's role is um, for the the revolution? Uh -huh. What is the diaspora's role in the, for the revolution? Um, is, 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 is there a revolution? That's a theatrical performance. <laughs> You know what, I'm, I'm of that belief that we need to be more there than here. You can't really run a revolution from outside. And so if you're really committed to it, we need to, and, and I'm gonna go even one step further. I agree on keeping the Armenian language for only that reason. Uh, the, the reason why we keep the Armenian language alive is that one day we all have to be back on our own lines to be using it. But they're so not using it there either. Well, I know that, but at least we can go back and... Uh, Economica Ministrucian <laughs> Funcian. <laughs> this is proper Armenia in Armenia. Unfortunately, the word Yegeretsi is not Armenian. It's a Greek word. Well, the, is fantastic. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. the, word, the word Aspares is a Persian word. Okay, so here is, we're losing our identities because we're not using our brains. We go the, to more get time. to your answer, one of the biggest things that we can... The most correct that, that, but one of the biggest things that we can do right now is make 
make trips there, get involved in what's going on. If you're gonna be doing activism from here, have an understanding of the entire package. I think what we do over here is a lot like armchair quarterbacking. We sit back and we say, well, we read it over here, we read it on this blog, we saw it in Aspares, and we're not getting the full picture of what's going on. Be a part of parcel of the, of the country. Yeah. In, my, in my translation of what he said, you guys know my joke of buy, buy a car, buy a car, mean chef village. In US, in France, in Lebanon, we call buy a car, buy a car, mean chef village, and we buy cars. <laughs> but coming to the Armenia, when we say buy a car, buy a car, we basically have the right to send two cars to Armenia. If you understood what I'm saying, is Barza Best Mimia and Skatagan Ketnivara, buy a car, buy a car about the revolution in Armenia. There was no revolution. I was disappointed when Rafi Hovandesian did not have actual plans to do the revolution. I mean, by being emotional and praying, but he, he didn't prayed. Have the people. <laughs> he prayed. He no, prayed. He didn't have the people behind him. And you no, no, he had. Because the people weren't ready for okay. it. Now, my point is this. Yeah. Martin Luther yeah. King had prepared yeah. the people. Well, he can say that. That doesn't mean. See, I don't have to accept everybody who uh, criticizes God. I wanted him to have a plan. So, my point is this. I have a plan of my Armenian identity, which is going to help each one of you or your offsprings. That's, that's my belief. So you guys need to have a plan. Every Armenian who wants to do something needs to have a plan. Right. When I decide that, hey, I'm smart, I could decide, I could say, hey, you know what? I think it's cool being American. Or I could say, you know what? I'm going to go out to Havana. That's a survival. No. No, but it's as parents, they bring you into the, their system. If you have, if, if you feel like it's forced upon you, it's not their system. You have to say, I don't believe in this. And you are free to do that. OK. Uh, they're telling me we only have five minutes. The question back here. They have to say something. Make bargain with me and Tara Kerry can bargain with you. Father Baskin, when we die, 
if there is a heaven, me and him are going to be in heaven. Because, yes. Yeah, because That's the best guarantee I've got. Yeah, because if you guys believe in heaven and hell, all the remaining priests, they're going to be in hell. <laughs> Except Father Boss. <laughs>